thing I want to tell you about the quiz, though, is I made a mistake that I posted about on the website on your handout. Um, and so your last quizzes, I dropped the grades for that because I had a failure um, on my part. Um, so the part that was messed up is on um, words like peto. I had peto, petes, petet, um, and that was an error. It should be peto, petis, petit, petimus, petitis, petunt. And likewise with the other words, it's I as the conjugational vowel and not E. Um, so I'm show you what that looks like. So peto, petis, petit, not peto, petes, petet, like we had said. And also remember that um, the third person plural in all the words ends in unt rather than int. Um, so that's all you need to know for that. And I can just go ahead and tell you the conjugation for the third conjugations that you'll have to put on it. the quiz is just peto. So make sure you get that um, and study that well. If you have questions, email me. Um, I should be able to answer them at some point, although I'm very busy this week. Um, okay, so another thing. Your translation handout that I sent you, I have updated it a little bit um, a few days ago. So before you sit down and listen to this lecture, you should print it off again. I have made some edits and it should have updated itself um, on the website. Um, so print off that and I'm just going to walk you through it this, for this lecture. It should be shorter, hopefully, than a normal 45 minute lecture. Um, so I'll start at the beginning of the handout. Um, we're going to translate the sentence just amo, okay? So amo, um, we always want to start with the verb. Thankfully, there's just one word here, and we know that it's a verb already. Um, amo is from the word amo, amare, amavi, amatum. And it is the first person singular. So what you would do if you were not sure what the word meant is you would go through its conjugation. So amo, amas, amat, amamus. Amatis Amat. Okay, so there's that. So I have Amo Amas Amat, Amamus Amatis Amat. So we know that it's this first one here, and that's first person singular. First person singular pronoun is I, so it's I do something, right? Um, and we know that Amo Amare Amavi Amatum means to love, so the sentence just is, I love. Um, yeah. Alright, so that one's pretty easy. The next sentence has more words. It's a little harder. So, like I said, we want to start with the verb when we're translating. So, we start by finding the verb. It's often at the end of the sentence. And in this next sentence, pueri domum idificant. Um, we see that idificant, the in A and T, that's a distinctly um, first conjugation ending. In T is actually a verb ending. So um, we are to automatically find that as the verb. Okay? Um, yeah, that's what I wrote there. Um, we need to find the vocabulary word. So we find it in our dictionary as idifico, idificare. Edificatum, or sorry, edifico, edificare, edificavi, edificatum. Um, and that means to build. Um, yeah, so we found the word, and now we go back to these endings to find whether it's first person singular or some other thing. Um, so I'm just going to use the same one. All we need to find out is about the endings. So it's not, um, it's not O. Oh, Idifico, it's not edificas or at. We go all the way down and we find that it's edificant. Okay, so that's the third person plural. So we know that that means they, um, and so the verb is they build. Okay, so now we want to see if there is a explicit subject of the sentence. It could just be they, 
in the they build. But we see, um, once we look, that puerí is in the, um, it could be in the genitive singular, but it's most likely in the nominative plural case. Um, and this is, the nominative case is, of course, for subjects and um, predicate nominatives. Um, so we find that puerí is the subject of the sentence, and it's nominative plural for boys. Um, puer, puerí is the word for boys. I know that some people have said that they haven't learned that word yet. Um, I'm not sure whether I have put it in a handout before, but um, at the end of this lecture I'm going to show you how to um, look up a word that you don't know. Um, this is a good skill to have because in Marshall a lot of times the teacher is not going to know what words you don't and what words you do know, so you'll have to be able to look them up yourself. Um, so, anyway, side check. Um, so we find Puerí, the boys, and it's the subject, so it's the boys build with the verb adificant. So the boys build. Now, that word in the middle, domum, um, we see that it ends in U-M, and we know that when we go through the second conjugation, whether it's in the masculine or the neuter, um, that would be the accusative singular, and that's the only option it can be. So, domus, domi, domo, domum, accusative singular, domo. Domi, domorum, domis, domos, domis. Um, so, we know accusative singular, and that means it's a direct object um, here. Um, so, when you think, when you find the accusative singular ending, you can assume for now that it is the direct object of the sentence. And domus is um, the word for um, home, right? There's another word, casa, casa. We talked about this in class last week. Um, that means more like a little cottage or something of that sort. It's sort of a diminutive word. Um, but domum is another word for home. They're kind of similar, but you can use them um, in either sense. Um, okay, so it's the direct object. Now, we remember that the direct object is the thing that receives the action of the verb. So that means um, if I say I love ice cream, ice cream is the thing that's receiving the love from me. Um, so in this case, that's Who's receive, or who or what is receiving the building? So the boys are building. Who's receiving the building? It's the home. So the boys build the home. That's the sentence in translation. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's anything else I want to say. Yeah. Okay. So next, let's see. Oh, that's the only two sentences I give in examples. Okay, so I want to go through a few of these sentences that I've asked you to practice on. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me about ones that I don't talk about or ones that I do and you still have questions. Um, the ones I want to do are 3, um, 4, and 10. I'm just going to do three examples. Um, three we'll start with is Puella Doket. So if I was doing this as my homework, I would write out the sentence on a piece of paper. Puella Doket. Okay. And like I said the other times, we're going to first look for the verb. We see that Puella, um, the A there, does not is not like a normal verb ending. So we're going to go somewhere else and look elsewhere first. Um, doquette, however, is the third person singular ending um, in all of the T shows you that it's the first, sorry, third person singular ending in each conjugation. So we see doquette as third person singular, okay, because it ends in T. It's also clear that it's in the um, second conjugation because of this E here, doquette, um, and that E is um, characteristic of the second conjugation. Now remember, because I made this mistake on your handout for the third conjugation, it, it shouldn't, that conjugation should not have e's. That's i's, peto, petis. 
but the second conjugation still does have ease. So, dokeo, dokere, do kui, dokitum. Sorry, pause there for a second. Um, so, this word is from dokeo, and dokeo means teach. So, third person singular of teach is um, he, she, or it teaches. Okay? Um, so now we're going to examine puella. Puella is also one of those words that I'm not sure whether you guys have had it yet or not, but it means girl. And it's from the first conjugation. So it's puella, puellae, feminine. Um, and when we see this ending a, it could be two things. It could be the nominative singular, puella, or it could also be the ablative singular. We, when we um, decline this word, it's puella, puellae, puellae, puellam, puella. Um, so the first and the fifth are the nominative singular and the ablative singular. In this sentence, um, there's no um, reason to think that it's an ablative. If we had, for example, a preposition, like in or some other preposition, we might think, well, maybe it is. But right now, I'm not giving you prepositions with ablatives because we haven't covered it yet. So this is the nominative singular, which means, like I said earlier, that it's the subject because the nominative singular usually indicates subjects. Um, so with our third person singular verb, teach, and the nominative singular noun, girl, it, the sentence translated is the girl teaches. Um, we start with the verb amant, um, and we take it and we find that it's amo, amare, amave, matum, to love. When we conjugate it, we find that it's the third person, um, yeah, the third person plural, which means they love. Okay, that's step three. Now I go over here to the subject and go and find that it's puer, pueri, and it means boy. Um, then I decline it. And we said this could be the genitive singular, but it isn't in this case. It's the nominative plural because we haven't started using the genitive singular yet. So nominative plural means the subject, and it means the boys. So the boys love is the sentence. And let's do ten really quick. And I'm going to attach these, the pictures of these little handwritten things so that you can look at it while you're trying to work on it for yourself. So... 10. Oculus weed it. Um, these are, I think you maybe don't have oculus yet in your vocabulary, but oculus means I. Oculus, oculi, it's masculine. When we decline it, we find the only option is that it's nominative singular, so it's the subject, so the I. Um, and weed it, which I should have done first, um, is wideo, widere, uh, widi, weeditum. Um, and it means to see. So, wideo, wides, widet. We see that's third person singular. So, it's he, she, it sees. And our subject agrees with that in the nominative singular. So, it's the I sees. All right. So, um, if there are any questions, of course, let me know. Um, I'll attach these pictures of my work. And what I need you to do is, in class next week, what I need is... Um, your take-home quizzes that will be attached to your um, attached to the blog, and these ten sentences translated. Um, if you can do something like showing me your work, like I did here, where I write everything out, that would be great. But you don't have to do that as long as they're right, and I can tell how you got the translations. Um, okay, so I want to talk before I finish. Um, about William Whitaker's work. This is one of the greatest resources uh, a young Latinist could have. Um, it is a online dictionary. So if you Google William Whitaker's word or words, which is spelled like this, you will find this website. It's run by University of Notre Dame. Um, if you go to the website, you can see that it's either giving you options. You can either have Latin to English or 
English to Latin. So if you want to know what the word for I is in Latin, you would type I in the English to Latin box.